Have you ever stood in your driveway and wondered, I wish I could live on that side of the street? The honest truth is I do this, especially in the winter. I live in Denver and the suburbs, and I want to tell you five things to know about living in the Denver and the suburbs in the winter time, because I don't always think about these things every second of the day, but people that are moving here may want to know them. What's up guys, Jeremy Kane with Living in the Denver Suburbs, EXP Realty. Super excited to bring this one to you as I actually have a north facing driveway and we'll get to that in a second. But if you are interested in my market update weekly email, I do do the YouTube videos, monthly market updates, but I also send out a weekly market update, kind of has all the things about Denver and real estate and all the things. If you're interested in that, please click the link in the description or comment below and I'll make sure I get you on that list. I won't spam you or blow you up, just good solid information. Maybe you're just kind of keeping an eye on the market. But other than that, let's get into the show. Okay, so I'm gonna start right out the gate with kind of what I prefaced in the, the pre part of this video, and that is north facing driveways. If you live in Denver in the suburbs and you have a north facing driveway, you currently have two feet of snow on the ground at the time of this recording, and your neighbor, you can see their grass and they have no snow on their entire property but the truth is they probably have some snow in their backyard. Uh, what happens with the, when you have a north facing driveway is the house shadow is shadowing the driveway all day so the snow doesn't melt. So things like when I wake up in the morning and it is snowed, whether it's one inch or three feet, I have to go out there and shovel it off before we drive on it, before I take the kids to school. Because if I don't, then the tire tracks will then become ice. They're extremely hard to get out, so I don't like sit out there and work on it. I don't like putting a bunch of salt on my concrete because concrete usually cracks anyways and doesn't need a bunch of uh, chemicals on it. So that's something to know, especially when purchasing a home. I may be the only realtor in America that has a north facing driveway. Check that. I think my dad does too, and he's also a realtor, but um, this is something definitely to consider when you're buying a home, uh, unless you really like shoveling. And I will tell you, I really like shoveling, but now that I have a three spot uh, driveway, you know, maybe two cars deep, it, it takes me a little bit of time and it's not as fun as it used to be back in the day. So north facing driveway is the very first thing to know, especially when you're buying a home, but also just when you're living in the Denver and the suburbs. The next thing talking about um, snow is in Colorado, we use sand or rock on the snow so that there's traction when you have to stop. So the trucks will be out and, you know, we also use the mag chloride and the, that kind of stuff that is gunks up your windshield immediately. So if you're in an area that uses that and it's the right temperatures, that's kind of a weird one. They have to put it down before. Sometimes they don't get it down. If it's just mag chloride and the snows, the snow melts off pretty good, your car is gonna be super dirty. It's super bad for your paint. So make sure that you're getting that car wash as soon as possible and always keep um, that windshield washer fluid available because I go through half a gallon every time it snows, I feel like. So, but in the meantime, we also use rocks. Um, and so you're plowing the roads and they have a big dump truck that lets rocks down. Obviously, if you're right behind that plow truck, don't get too close because those rocks could bounce up and hit your windshield. Um, that's not, you're not out of the woods if you're you know staying far back from those because when cars drive over those things at 45 miles an hour because the light's green, then they kick up rocks into your windshield. So they also chip up the kind of front of your, front of your car, not as noticeable or, or big of a deal. And they have a lot of clear bras and things like that that go on the cars these days but those windshields i would imagine we replace a lot more windshields in those states that use rock um, and sand and so that just is so when you get to a stoplight you can have some traction to stop so you don't slide through it um, some of you guys in the midwest that might be watching this are like oh that's brilliant i'd rather have that than salt because i know that salt is used in a lot of places and has uh, creates rust and rust in all parts of the car the next thing is warming up your car and i promise it's not super freezing all the time in colorado we're just talking about these things that happen in the snow it is illegal to warm up your car in more, most jurisdictions it's called puffing obviously we have the remote starts and things and puffing is actually in place not necessarily for the environment that you might think it is but because of the car theft um, concern so uh, you are not allowed to have a manual start car and leave it unlocked and running um, you could get a ticket or your car could get stolen worse yet but obviously be aware of that it's always nice to warm up your car but you may want to invest in a snow brush because you may be there for quite a while warming up your windshield um, 
And if you're just standing outside warming up your windshield, you might as well be brushing it off. I will tell you that it would be fantastic if you could brush off your roof and your truck beds and all the things, because when you're driving down the road and you just let the car defrost the windows so you can see and all the snow's blowing, it's kind of annoying for the person behind you. So make sure you invest in a good snow brush, um, especially on those taller vehicles and understand that puffing is technically illegal in most jurisdictions. They do write tickets for it, I will tell you that. Um, I've never got one. I use my remote start, I've never had an issue. I'm pretty sure that's because it locks and you know the car's technically not on or something, but who knows? I could be breaking the law too. <laughs> but just make sure you're aware of puffing laws uh, when, you're, when you're living here in the Denver suburbs. The next one is real estate specific, and this is something that um, uh, literally on hundreds of inspections, almost every inspection I've been to that's a detached home, they talk about the grading around your foundation. And so it's super important that all that snow that's sitting on your roof and running and melting down into the gutters, obviously we have great sunshine in Colorado, so sometimes it snows and then it melts off super quickly in the gutters. Make sure everything's going away from your home and out to the perimeter of your home as possible. Make sure there's no negative draining around that foundation because that's something to really consider. If you think about it, snow, especially on the north side of your home, whether it's your driveway or not, will sit there for long and kind of slowly melt off. Well, if you have negative drainage towards your foundation, that water's just running down those foundation walls and can definitely cause issues over time. So make sure that your grading is away from your home and all that water gets as far out as it possibly can. Um, and especially on that uh, south, all the south facing sides of your home because that gets most sunlight, so that melts the quickest. So just make sure that you have that. Also the gutters, make sure your gutters are cleaned out because those downspouts get clogged up. And when they do, ice can kind of form, ice stands and things can form over the gutters and kind of run down the side of your home, around your windows and things like that. And you definitely don't want that. So just making sure all the water and all the wonderful snow gets uh, pushed away as it melts is super important uh, here in Colorado. The next is just a fair warning. Uh, some of the coldest, bitterest cold days in Colorado have blue skies and sunshine especially after you know these deep cold snaps and you know things like that you might even keep your you know, have to keep your cabinets open so your pipes don't freeze if they're on exterior walls and that kind of stuff slow drip whatever it can be um, even in newer homes that are insulated well sometimes those those uh, PEX pipes go towards you know an outside wall and they freeze up or whatever so yeah we want to make sure the pipes don't freeze but more importantly we also want to make sure that we understand that sometimes it's sunny outside and it's bitter cold and we have to check the weather because I was taking my girls to school the other day. The thermometer on the dash said negative seven and it was blue skies and sunny for the first time in a couple couple days because it had been snowing. So that bitter cold kind of sets in and once the sky is clear, that cold kind of sits down coming off the mountains and it, it gets really cold. It could be super cold. So don't always think that those sunny days are the, the bright warm days. So make sure that you're paying attention to the temperature, the forecast, wherever you check it out, because that's definitely something that, uh, that can get to you. So if you have any questions about this, please comment below. I would love to talk to you about living in Denver in all seasons, but especially especially in the winter. Again, if you're interested in my weekly uh, market update email, I can definitely get that to you. Link in the description, comment below. Uh, as always, please like, comment, subscribe, share this with somebody that may uh, be experiencing their first Denver winter or you know, thinking about moving here. The honest truth is we don't have a ton of snow here. We have 300 days of sunshine, but sometimes it gets cold in Denver in the suburbs. So we'll talk to you soon. Have a great one. Bye-bye.